Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a War of the Spark draft here on the channel. That's right, in today's video, I'm going to be guiding you through the ropes of this older format, showing you how to draft it, and hopefully having a lot of fun along the way. Who am I kidding? We're going to have a lot of fun. Before I dive in, though, I want to remind you that if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section down below with your questions, thoughts, or feedback. And if you would like to catch me streaming live, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. And, uh... Yeah, I wasn't the last one to hit ready for once, folks. Let's go. Everyone always says I'm making them wait, but, you know, we'll have to wait until the draft portion to make them wait. So, also, if you would like to support my content directly, you can do so via the Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bola supports my content directly and helps me continue making videos. We have opened up a fantastic rare, Massacre Girl. Kind of a gruesome storyline on this one, but basically a little mini sweeper if you can set it up. And it's actually a really fun thing to try and set up. Uh, it does like it kills a creature and then if that creature dies, you kill another creature and then you kind of can set it up. And uh, so it's a very skill testing card. But a lot of the time, even if it's just a five mana four four that like kills a small creature, it's going to be good. And it has a lot of more upside than that. If this weren't in the pack, it's actually a pretty interesting uh pack to talk about. One thing I will say is that the Grixis colors in War of the Spark are better than the Selesnia colors typically, and especially white is relatively weak. So it's like Grixis and then green is a little bit below that, and then white is a decent amount below that just because the white cards are a little bit worse. Skylord and Evolution Sage are both close close here. Um, oh, thanks, Echol, for the raid coming in at a perfect time. But I think I would probably take Eternal Skylord second out of that pack, though it is close. Uh, there are some good cards there. So... We have started off with a uh, Massacre Girl. We have our second pick in front of us, and immediately we are got in a little bit of an interesting spot. Some of the archetypes that you might run into, um, they're kind of just like more macro archetypes. There's not like any like decks that are really hard to draft, technically speaking. Um, Blue Red has a spells theme a lot of the time. Uh, there's Planeswalkers in the set, and so Proliferate can really help out. Um, thank you so much, Echo. I really appreciate that. Um, Bloom Hulk is... One of, if not the best, green common. Paradise Druid is also quite nice. Um, but the cards that I'm eyeing are Jaya, just a great card, uh, Bloom Hulk, Paradise Druid, and Tamiya's Epiphany. Getting the cheap mana ramp is really nice. Black green can oftentimes splash around. That was kind of black green's identity. Flux Channel can be good. There's not a black card to follow up with, so I think it's between the Druid, the Jaya, and the Bloom Hulk. And I think I'm going to take the... Mm, I already have a five drop. I'm going to take the Jaya anyway. I like Jaya a lot. And getting Planeswalkers is kind of nice. I don't know. It's close. And Jaya can make your other red cards better. I think it's interesting um, with some of the green cards, but as I said before, I would rather bias my deck towards a non-green color pair if possible. So, yeah. This is another, uh, just like, if you draft the format a lot, you kind of want to avoid Selesnia if you can. Because there's just, like, great black removal spells. Vizier the Scorpion's great. Obnixus's Cruelty is a fantastic black removal spell. Kazmina's Transmutation is really bad. It's like the Raven form of the set, where it looks like it might be okay, but it ends up being kind of bad. And it's much worse than Raven form, because it makes it, like, yeah, it's just not great. I think in this pack, I like Obnixus's Cruelty. I think it's better than Vizier, even though Vizier is pretty nice. Um, it's nice to have just good removal with my Massacre Girl with, to protect my Planeswalkers like Jaya, and this is just a really nice removal spell. Jiang Yangu is pretty nice sometimes as well. If I had taken a green card, I still would probably take the Obnixilis' Cruelty. Okay, so I will say Soren's Thirst ended up being really bad in this set, so try to avoid Soren's Thirst when you can. Uh, it's just really hard to cast, and it doesn't kill stuff you really care about. Um, invading Manticore is solid, but you don't really need to prioritize it. I wasn't a huge fan of Relentless Advance. No Escape is sometimes playable, but uh, it is a uh, pretty clunky card, so you don't need to prioritize it again. Uh, I know that I'm kind of jumping between the cards, but there's a lot to talk about. I think Thunder Drake is pretty good, but it's not in a color that I am currently, and it's a little bit clunky. The Helion is not great either. So, or the Helion. Bond of Insight wasn't great either. Hmm, I could just take the Thunder Drake. Blue has seemed reasonably open, potentially, and we could play Blue Black. Blue Black has a little bit of an amass theme. Um, and I think it's better than taking a six drop. There's a few like interchangeable six drops. There's a tithe bearer giant in black. It's also pretty similar in its effect. Okay, and now we get a Narset. Nice little reward, for, kind of, for going into blue black potentially. Um, yeah, 
Honor the God Pharaoh is pretty good. One of the things that a mass does in this set, it makes a zombie token if you don't have any, or it puts a counter on the zombies if you do have them. Um, it makes a lot of these more marginal cards much better. Because just imagine like a, a three mana 1-1 one, one that has this effect, and uh, you won't be that far off. It also fuels spells matter cards. So this is definitely a reasonable card to consider. Um, Turret Ogre does have reach. Keep that in mind. Uh, this card's pretty nice, though, if you can build around it. We already have Obnixil's Cruelty. We could splash Jaya. And Totally Lost isn't the worst card to play. Erratic Visionary is a card you're fine playing one of. And Honor the Godfather is fine. But I think Narset's pretty high upside for when it works out. Okay, so again, we kind of want to prioritize sticking towards black because we have Massacre Girl. Obnixil's is Cruelty. Blue is a little bit more debatable. And we also have some red cards. But we're pretty much where we want to be. Somewhere in the Grixis colors is nice. I think Vraska's finisher is quite nice. It's hard to play around this a lot of the time. And the fact that it can destroy a Flameswalker is really nice as well, because uh, sometimes you just need to get those off the battlefield. Domri's Ambush is quite good, but we aren't anywhere near green, even though green has seemed okay. As an open, red hasn't seemed particularly open either. Shriek Diver's fine. Uh, Dusk Mantle Operative, not particularly good. Vraska's finisher is the best card in this pack over the Invading Manticore. It also helps get me deeper into black, which is nice. Everyone at once. Yeah, exactly. Turret Ogre was like the first in the random cards that have reach category. I'll take random cards that have reach for seven, Alex. Aw. Oh, rip, Alex. Feels bad, man. Um, No Escape is a fine card to pick up. Dave Real Shadow Fugue is always a little bit too clunky, I'd say. Ashiok Skulker is not the worst, but I think No Escape is better. No, white in this set is significantly worse. Cron Wrangler is okay sometimes, but we aren't really going that direction. We're just going to take a, our first no escape. Um, Crush Descent, not a particularly great card. I will say that Snare Spinner is much better than it looks. Um, so maybe we could just take that as a speculative thing. We probably don't need multiple Vraska's finishers. We don't have any two drops yet, and two drops are really important. So we'll take the Snare Spinner over some of these random cards, I think. This card's not good. White in this set is just best avoided generally unless you get some really good white green cards a lot of the time or some like gold cards, but they're just, you can draft white. There's some good cards, but it's just not great. The cards just aren't super powerful. Sarkin's Catharsis is kind of a fun card because there were some decks where you could just get like four of them and then your opponent would try to stabilize and you would just burn them out, which is kind of funny. Um, I did that a couple times, but I don't think it's like necessarily a great strategy. I don't know how good it is with bots. Okay, and now these last packs aren't super important. We'll just take a Teferi's Time Twist. Sometimes you'll want one. Invader, sometimes playable. Yeah, and we get the Invading Manticore late anyway. Forced Landing is sometimes okay against uh, as a sideboard card against God Eternal Kefnet. Or just against Flyers. So Black is open if we're getting a last pick Shriek Diver, which is kind of nice. Uh, to well, one thing I will say, Totally Invasion, pretty nice. I don't think this card's particularly good. Um, Yeah, so you get to put the, your worst two cards from your graveyard into your hand if you have four different cards in your graveyard. Four cards? Hmm. We have various Time Twister plus Massacre Girl. Oh, that is pretty sweet. Hmm. I think we might just take Cyclops Electromancer. This card's really good when it comes together. Uh, Contentious Plan can also be nice. But judging by what seemed open, we got a couple of late red cards. Um, but we do have some blue, but the blue cards aren't particularly good. And the black did seem open. I don't think we need to prioritize those. Cyclops, how many instants and sorceries do we have? Three. Nahiri is not the greatest because it only hits tapped things. This card's fine as well. I'm just going to take the Electromancer and hope to get there a little bit, I think. I think it's a powerful card for sure. What can I say? What can I say, Chad? He does it again. And black is our main color, too. You know. Oh, what a legend. Obviously, we're going to do it, Chad. And it's not even incorrect. This card's a beating. Absolutely incredible. Um, maybe we can get a gateway plaza later. We are uh, living the dream. <laughs> it got passed to us, too. 
we probably put them into white black uh, into white green because we're sneaky like that <laughs> what are the odds i don't know 100 percent. it happens so gotta be 100 <laughs> percent. so we're gonna be on the lookout for guild globes gateway plazas and two drops because we do need some two drops this card's like actually kind of playable sometimes but obviously just jamming the god pharaoh or the dragon god whatever it's called okay i will say arlen voice of the pack is really good but we're not green obviously uh there is a mana geode i think we might just need to take a two drop though Lazatep reaver really nice defensive body it's in our main base colors so kind of the perfect fit here Heartfire is the type of card that you can also play if you get some of these effects. I would love a mana geode, but hopefully we can wheel it. Jace's Triumph is basically a divination, which is just a little bit slow. You just need to make sure you get on the board in this set, and we already have late game, really powerful things. Masker Girl, Girl is also really good with the Lazotep Reaver, because if you have a Lazotep Reaver and a Masker Girl, uh, you'll like immediately get the first two triggers, so you can give everything minus three, minus three, which is nice. So we're just going to take the, the Reaver. Oh, it's too easy sometimes, chat. We're playing. We're, we're building a Bolas theme deck here. I mean, this card's really good. Uh, you do need to have the defensive tools to make it work. But I mean, and this pack is really powerful. There's a and a Kazmina. There's a Spark Harvest. I mean, they're both great, but we got to go for the flavor win. We've got to take it. We've got the, both triple black cards. Spell Wardrobe Weird is pretty nice, too. It's got actually an infinite loop with the Return the Fallen card, which is nice. I think after that, I'd probably take Casmina over Spark Harvest. Yeah, this is normal. What are you talking about? But yeah, we're obviously taking the Citadel. And now early drops that can defend us are, like, number one priority. I guess we'll take Lazatep over third Shriek Diver. Not a particularly great pack for us. Contentious plan versus Prismite. I don't love Prismite. Hydro Giant. This is why the six drops aren't super important to get because you can just land. There's this thing. I think we're going to pro. I don't know what our secondary color is. Hmm. Contentious plan. I think we're ending up blue, black, and splashing red probably. Prismite is just so bad in this set, though. I, I can't really put Prismite in my deck. It's just such a terrible card. This is much better. Here, there's Mana Geode or Burning Prophet or Erratic Visionary. I think we're probably blue-black base because our red cards are easier to splash, and we have more blue cards early on the curve. I probably want a Mana Geode, though. I don't really need to worry about that. I'm just going to take the Geode. It helps me with my fixing. I think one Geode is important for this deck. And I'm probably not going to be playing these Shriek Divers. I'm more of a defensive deck. Why wow, this card is such a disappointment. It's not really good in my deck either. It's just like, why is this here? There's a 2-drop. There's also a Soren's Thirst. I might play one Soren's Thirst. Help me survive the early turns. I have a heavy black deck. Well, now it's just... Now I have to take it, because if I if I have my Bolas in play, I can deliver unto evil. <laughs> There's also, like, a random Vraska's finisher or something, but, I mean, how could I not? Okay, we'll take this Guy Theater Strix, I guess. We're not going to take the Vraska's finisher. The Submersible should at least be unblockable or something. Aw, uh, the Geode came back, so we could have gotten the 1-3. Prismite came back. There's also a no escape. We already have a no escape, though. Okay, so our number one priority, say it with me, is two drops. Our two drops are not particularly good blockers. We would love a million more Lazotep Reavers. Okay, this card actually was sometimes playable, which is kind of wild. But it just was sometimes. Um... It's looking like our two drops are blue, but we could just abandon the blue cards. We have one, two, three, four, five blue cards, six, six blue cards. We could just take Tibalt. Tibalt's really good. There's also Burning Prophet. I think we're just going to take this, though. I think we really just need... It helps us stall. Red Black has some nice sacrifice themes. 
I don't know. I think Blast Zone's not a card we can afford to put in our three-color deck that wants to cast Bolas. Two mana Geodes might be a bit much, but we're probably going to play it. Yeah, we're just going to... Wow, so there's a Guild Globe, which helps us with our fixing and gives us something to do on turn two. There's also Ashiok, which is one of the most, like, irritating cards to face, because sometimes they just mill you out. The problem is, with Ashiok in our deck, is our deck already does a lot of nothing in the early game. We don't have many two drops, we don't have many, like, ways to protect it, and we already kind of have a great late game thanks to the Citadel and the Bolas, and so we don't really need the Ashiok, and it just kind of weakens our deck in the spots where it's already weak. I think we're just going to take Guild Globe because it helps us cast all of our spells. Which is kind of weird. Ashiok is also a card that I was like particularly not a fan of because like some decks just really punish it. But in in general, it, it, it's pretty good a lot of the time. Even though I wasn't always a huge fan. Mayhem Devil. Sacrifice is permanent. We have not a ton of sacrifice stuff. We aren't really a black-red deck. We have this as a sacrifice card, but we're probably not playing it. Probably just a blue-black deck, and so we'll take the Erratic Visionary. But yeah, there's a God Pharaoh statue. <laughs> but yeah, we're just going to take this. Hmm. Toll the Invasion's pretty good. I think I'm just going to take another Guild Globe, though. Helps me cast my spells. Draws through my deck to find my Bolas. And I have a lot of three drops. I'm probably not going to play the Invader, though. And this way we can avoid putting Prismite into our deck. Okay, so what is this? This is... Alright, it's like a 4 mana for two two twos. 8 the Fallen. How many creatures do we have? 10? Yikes. 8 the Fallen. It can be pretty good, though. Gets back some of my key cards. Probably going to take it over this thing. Just a nice control card. Oh my gosh, Fibblethip. Perfect. Fibblethip gets lost. We find him. Spark Reaper is also pretty nice, but we'd rather just have a two drop. I don't like Rampage all that much. There's a lot of random 1-1s one running around. Um, making them sack a Planeswalker is not as good as it sounds because they'll often have already activated it. We'll take Fibblethip though. Yeah, we're certainly not a Banehound deck. Interplanar Beacon... Not really our sort of card. This card was a pet card of mine, Sahili Silverwing. It's much better than it looks. Just four mana, two, three flyer blocks a lot of things. Liliana's Triumph, not super great. We could take up Higher Helix, but we're not likely to be able to cast it early because we're mostly a blue-black deck. We could take this as well. We don't have a ton of interaction. Hmm. I'm going to take Totally Lost, I think. Just to get a little bit more interaction in the deck. Another Invading Manticore for some top end. Not that I need top end, but I don't really need bottom end either. This card's not really a card I love to play. Eh, we could take it over a third Shriek Diver. We're not even playing the first two Shriek Divers. Yeah, totally lost in Fibblethip. We're playing just a theme deck, chat. Okay, so let's just put the Shriek Divers in for the argument's sake. Uh, we're not going to play this because it's colorless for most of the game. And our mana is already pretty decent. Um, We're probably not going to play this either. Again, making them sack a Planeswalker is just not great. Because uh, they'll oftentimes like, like imagine they go Narset minus, and then you make them sacrifice. They've already gotten value. Mayhem Devil, what sacks do we have? We have this, which is kind of funny. You sack 10 permanents, ping them 10 times, that's a win. Um, we're probably going to cut some of these other cards, so not really use, worth doing it. We're probably going to cut that anyway. So this thing is a combo with it because you sacrifice it. But overall, okay. So we have 51 cards here. We're going to maybe play, we're going to probably play 17 lands here. We might even push it to 16 because we were going to play double mana geode, I think. So if we're playing 17 lands with two mana geodes, that's maybe a bit much. But we'll have to see. So we're, first of all, let's look at our mana situation. We have two mana geodes. 
two guild globes to help us cast our cards. So that means we're probably going to want to be more selective on which uh, red cards that we play. So that means probably not playing on Crop Invader. Probably not playing both of the Mastercores, if either of them. Um, and yeah, so now let's just cut some power level things. We aren't going to really want Sky Theater Strix. We're more of a defensive deck, and this is more of an aggressive card. Teferi's Time Twist does have some nice synergies in the deck. You can protect a Planeswalker. Um, hmm. Hate the Fallen. Vampire. I don't know if we really want Vampire Opportunist. I don't love it. Not sure I love it. Just not a great card. This is not a good defensive body either. I actually like Sahili Silverwing. If four mana, two, three flyers actually just okay. And this is like a solid card in the format. Just lines up decently. I'm going to cut the Prismite though. I don't think we need it. Um, and then we can probably cut the... Let's see how many instants and sorceries we have. Five, eight. So this guy's actually pretty good in the deck. We can cut the Lazotep Behemoth. I think the totally loss is probably necessary. So now we're at 44 cards. Let's put some of the flex slots over here. Aid the Fallen is a flex slot for sure. Teferi's Time Twist is a flex slot. Contentious, contentious Plane. I think we want to keep all four of these two drops. I think Soren's Thirst is actually okay in this deck. Gonna have less than 10. It could. It could for sure. Um, probably going to cut Aid the Fallen. Which is a pretty clunky card. My stuff doesn't trade off early. I'm not particularly grindy there. Um, what does Contentious Plan work with? I might, I'm probably going to cut an Invading Manticore. In it, never fear. It's an okay card, but nothing too special. Can I just play and draw a card? And then I can put counters on... One of my mass tokens, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have a decent number of cards that work with the plan. Various time twist. How many ETBs do I have? This is good with that. It's good with this. That's two. Resets my planeswalkers. Resets this ETB. Hmm. Oh my gosh, I could get the combo. If I play Fibblethip out of my deck, thanks to Bolasa Citadel, I draw two. That's wild. <sighs> so Contentious Plan and Teferi's Time Twist both have some synergies in the deck. That's for sure. I think Soren Source is actually okay in the deck because it fuels my Cyclops synergies and it gains me some life and I don't have a ton of things and I'm a heavy black deck. Um, I don't think I'd, ra I think I'd rather have it than Vampire Opportunist. So no. maybe I do want Vampire Opportunist still. I don't love the card, but it, it, it does some work sometimes. Gains you some life. Um hmm. Well, the finish is actually easy to cast, so getting Rakdos mana in the early game is gonna be tough. I think I'm gonna cut the Manticore just so that I can reduce my red requirements, though I do like it. I think it's okay. Um, and then I'm probably going to play 16 lands. Deliver Unto Evil, honestly, should probably be the cut. Which is uh, kind of funny. But I, I want to play it, because how many how times are you going to get to play it with Nicole Bolas? There's some things you do just because it's fun to do, rather than it being correct, necessarily. How many creatures do I have? I have nine creatures. Probably can cut Teferi's Time Twist. Contentious Plan is probably better. This thing flickers. Massacre Girl. The Electromancer. That's really the two of the big things, but they already cost five, so being able to flicker those is no guarantee. Tibalt really does a good job stalling, but maybe I could cut that. Okay, so then I would play 16 lands here because I do have double mana geode, which brings up my mana count. Is Tully Lost a real card? Tully Lost is a real card. It could be cut, but I, I think it, it's nice to have some interaction. My deck is actually pretty light on interaction 
for big things. Other than Nicole Bull lost to kill big things, I'm really lacking on him. Um, I could see just wanting to put a Vampire Opportunist to have another 2-drop in the deck, and it gives me a way to spend mana in the late game. So I have 4 instance 2 Sorcery. So this Sky Cyclops Electromancer is looking a lot worse now. So I'm just going to cut that for a Vampire Opportunist. Not the best card on its own, but I already have my red sources stretched a little bit thin here. And just surviving the early game so that I can win late game with my Planeswalker and my Citadel. It's kind of nice. I like having a couple flyers. I think Shriek Diver could be okay, just as another flyer, but they'll probably be fine on that front. Aid the Fallen... I think I'm going to try it like this as my initial build. Fifteen, not, Only nine creatures is a little bit low for sure. But, you know, we'll see how it does. Um, let's look at the mana costs here now. We want to be a heavy black. Nine black. It says nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But those nine black cards are like all triple black. So we're going to go up to 10 swamps, or 9 swamps at the very least. Let's go 9 swamps, 1 mountain. That's 16 lands. That gives me 6. Hmm. I'm not going to play the Mayhem Devil. It has very little synergy with my deck. It's got synergy with... Like, exactly Bolas' Citadel, and nothing else, really. And Guild Globe. We... Yeah, if we have 10 permanents in play. <laughs> and they might already be at 10 or less life. So this is 15, 16. So this is only 6 blue sources. I think I want more blue sources. So maybe I go 8, up it to 7. And then these two mana geodes can help me. The two guild globes can help me. That seems reasonable. Obviously making Volos the poster card of the deck. Um, Prismite's not great. It's worse than the Opportunist, I think. Yeah, we got past it, World Rock. It was wild. We're going to start it off with this build. I could adapt it later on. But we're going to start with this and see how it does. And I will see you folks in the matches. Before I get to the matches, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support me and my content at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. And special thanks to those who support at the credits level. It has grown to such a point where there are now two columns of patron credit folks. And I really do appreciate all of the people who help me continue producing high quality content on a consistent basis. If you think that my videos have provided you with some value, you can find more information about what it means to become a patron at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. As I said before, it is flexible, it can be for any amount that you want each month, and it can be cancelled at any time, so there's no long-term commitment if you have an unstable situation budgetary-wise. But I really do want to thank all of the patrons who support me, and without further ado, let's get to the matches. Welcome to round one. We have a keepable hand here. It's not great, it's a little bit slow, but... And we also are using our bolas sleeves here, we have to do it. Okay, we'll lead with Island. Maybe I should have led with Swamp in case I drew Soren first. That's definitely correct. So, already making mistakes here. We're going to start with the Lazar Tip Reaver. Get our defenses out, slash pressure. You always want to play your two drops first if you can. So, like, if they want to turn three Planeswalker, we could attack it. Okay, the Light Shield is here. <laughs> Turn four, first game. Nicole Bolas on the play. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's cute. That card's really good, too. Like, it's really good.
I just have to hope they can't deal one damage, and after that I'm okay. I have to kill the Soren, though. Oh, I was on the draw, wasn't I? You're right. Wait, was I? Yeah, yeah, I was. No! That's a bummer. I don't have Aid the Fallen anymore, either. But I can at least play Thunder Drake and get a counter on it, so... We still got a two for one, and they had to have a, an answer. But it's a little bit less uh, game winning. It was still funny, though. <laughs> got him. Play Managiot. Instantly lock up the win. No! Stop! <laughs> Feels bad, man. Deliver doesn't get it back. That's why Deliver is so bad. I have to have four different card names in my graveyard, and then Deliver only gets back the two worst ones. <laughs> well, that's nice. I'm going to use that here because it's an efficient answer to a 2-5 threat. And then we can attack. Sure. We're in top deck mode here. Our theme deck. No, Davriel. Sure. This is why we've been holding lands for their discard effects. You're right, I won't be needing that, buddy. Wow, look at this. I'm gonna get back an island. <laughs> Jeez Louise, the horror. I'm going to kill Dave Real. It's a shame, but you know. We're not taking any chances here. Oh, game, game audio is muted for you folks. I think I know the cause of that, maybe. Let's see. As long as you can hear me, it's not a huge problem. Uh, properties. There you go. I, I, I wish someone had told me that earlier. Like, someone could have said that, like, I don't know, 40 minutes ago when I started the stream. <laughs> Yep, shocker. This card's really bad. <laughs> I do want to live the dream. It's a compliment. It's just strange. Okay. Uh, it didn't notice. I don't really listen to game sounds either. Especially when my own voice is there. I can understand. We'll do this. We don't want to play our lands either because we have Erratic Visionary. A reasonable card. Welcome to my symphony of pain. I adore an audience. 
I adore an audience too, Tybalt. In that way we are the same. Who would have thunk? Almost two years later, Tybalt making mischief again. Why'd you have to have Spark Harvest opponent? This game would have been over so long ago! Curse you! <laughs> well, I know that I cut the Deliver in a world where I'm trying my best to win, but if you're trying to cast Deliver into Darkness when you have a Nicole Bolas, there's only so many chances you get in your magic career to do that. Oh my gosh, we are so screwed. I've got him right where I want him, clearly. <laughs> well, that's the difference between aid and deliver, yeah. Pretty much. Oh, are you kidding me? Really? No! What was that Houdini trickery? Oh no! Oh no! That was no! <laughs> they switched it up on me! You gotta be kidding me! Oh my gosh! Well. That was some Houdini magic right there. That was probably... I could have won the game if I had done that properly. Because this thing would be dead. This would be a 4-4. I would have knocked it out. <sighs> yeah. Ludicrous. You must have seen what happened to Tony. It swapped their places. The one went to the left when I blocked it, and then I went to ping it, and it swapped on me because I was too fast. They're just going to bring it back. I'm so dead. Soren's really good. This is first strike, right? So I go to three here and I die to a removal spell. And I can jump block.
If I only I had drawn those cards in opposite order, if I had been able to soar and thirst that first. Yeah. Okay. We are uh, going to cut the uh, garbage card that we put in our deck. I just can't handle it. Deliver into Darkness is just such a bad card. It's like actually unplayably horrific. We totally would have won that game like relatively easily if this had just been Aid the Fallen, so we're just going to do that. Not even being results based, that card's just so bad. How did we lose? Well, first of all, they had Spark Harvest to kill our Planeswalker. Um, second of all, they uh, uh, we flooded a little bit. Like, if we'd drawn that Bolas Citadel a little bit earlier, we would have been in fine shape. Um, and then third, they played Soren and then got Soren back, and Soren's a beating, pretty much. I don't know. I don't think we could have won that game uh, because Soren can just keep bringing back their stuff. Um, yeah, also, we didn't draw any cards that did anything. As evidenced by the fact that we hit like six spells in a row off of our Bolasa Citadel. I don't know. And also we played a uh, Deliver Unto Evil, which was just horrifically bad. And then they also Houdini Jinx juked us, which was kind of funny. So yeah, this card actually is a real card that we can put in a deck and not be completely ashamed. Also, we were on the draw. If we'd been on the play, we would have won because they wouldn't have been able to... Uh, Cast their Spark Harvest until another turn, uh, so we would have gotten some extra value. They would have had to discard a card, and every card kind of mattered that game, so... It all piled on top of itself. Oh no. Hmm. We are L and one world rock. Oh no, not Jang Yang Goo. can tap my guy. No, they can't because they can't add mana and tap. Oh, no, they can. They can. I forgot how this card worked. I got it confused with, um, what's the card that's like two and tap it to tap like fan bearer. Oh, well, hate to break it to you, buddy, but you're probably going to regret doing that in a few turns, maybe like six turns down the line. I don't know. Oh, step one. Now we just need another swamp and a mountain. Or another two more swamps. Giant killer. No, there's a card. There was like a draft card that was kind of like that. Oh, no. Yep, that's uh, potent. We could lose, 100%. 
I think I realized my error there. I needed to just kill this Yang Yanggu. <sighs> now they can't get counters, so their proliferates are a lot worse. No! <laughs> We're screwed! Their last card was Tulsimir! I need a swamp. I need to get the Citadel down. We need the Citadel. Yes! No! No! <laughs> We're so dead! It was looking so good! <laughs> We were in such good shape, they have a complete blank on the battlefield. I think I jump so that I can maybe play more cards off this. Yikes. The horror. Okay, perfect. I kind of do want to keep that on top, but if I do, I go to three casting it. And then I can play Bolas. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm going to be okay. Oh, and I can use this ability to gain five life. Why does he sound like Jabba the Hutt? To Bantha for the Hwatli. Sorry. Um. Hmm. So I could proliferate and then gain six. Or I could just kill this. I think he's going to die no matter what. No, he's not. I can eat two of their creatures first. I think I'm going to do that. Um. So now they attack everything at Bolas to kill him. I am omnipotent. omnipotent suits you, Bolas. They can suicide their evolution sage to kill it. They're attacking me? Oh no. Bolas lives! He's alive! Oh my gosh! Wow, contentious plan clutch as heck. Hmm. I think I'm gonna plus first. Let's see what they're drawing. Ooh, nice. That doesn't do anything. Let's start taking out their planeswalker. Stop fighting and listen. We can aid the fallen to get back Bolas if he dies. One of the reasons to kill Huatli is because even though it's not doing a ton, it's still nice to just kill the card because they put it in their deck for a reason. I feel like losing from this position would be really bad. Like, we have Bolas and the Citadel. That would be nice, but I don't really want to lose four life, so I'm just going to draw a card.
I'm not going to go too low on life. No need to risk it. We do have some life gaining in the deck. We have the Vampire Opportunist, and we have Sorin's Thirst. We're going to play the gold, keep the Guild Globe. We aren't going to cast it. It'll be nice for double spelling here. So we're going to plus first. We're going to make sure we win. Oh, gosh. We kill everything with Massacre Girl. Oh, that would be wild. I don't know if it's worth it, but we kill everything. It's got to be sick. So we kill one, two, three, four, five. Oh, man. I don't know if I want to lose everything. But I kind of want to. I kind of think it'd be so sick to watch the whole bur world burn. Um... Hmm. I'm going to cast this. <gasps> Thibble Thib to draw two cards! We have to do it. Okay, I'm sorry. I had to do it. I lost all self-control there for a moment. There's the opportunist. Okay. So we can activate the Opportunist. So we can gain some life. Huge. I know we have 10 permanents. Okay. Time to start draining them out. We can't have to stop drawing cards. There's a Jaya. Kill their big ground creature. I don't want to lose to a random pump spell. I'm just going to attack their face. How many mana do I have for? I have a lot of mana. I have practiced against many players like you. Keep an open mind. I missed a point of damage. The horror. <laughs> and I didn't attack with this thing. Yeah. We're not going to deck? What are you talking about? We have like 20 power of creatures and 5 cards. Oh, we're just short on the mana. Boom! Oh yeah, we did it. We did it. Heck yeah! Oh ho ho, yes. Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. We're going to just run it back. 
Yes! Victory! That was a sweet one. Hmm, good oak. Well, we're keeping this. No creature, but who needs creatures? If our deck could have like five Lazatep Reavers, we would be happy to have all of them. <gasps> hmm. Well, we have turn four Nicole Bolas on the play. So hopefully we can win this one. I really hope we can win this one. <laughs> This is actually the the most decimation we can reap here. Sure, we definitely want Aid the Fallen. We can get back Volus. We have black or red mana. This can tap for any color. And this can make black and red mana. I must say, my turn four was a little bit better than yours, opponent. I will spare you in exchange for eternal servitude. Oh, yeah, Fibblethip can block Prismite. We could have minused, because that way they can't Spark Harvest. Oh, Kiora's Dambreaker. I love that card. That's a sweet one. Ah, uh, the doomed operative. Oh, we can make another devil? We're not going to do that, but it's kind of cute. Probably should have done this the opposite order. I'll just line up the best possible blocks here. I can contend just playing next turn. Oh, they bounced it so I don't get to draw. The shame. No! Why did I play the island? The world may never know. I can still do this if I crack this thing, right? I need to get red black. No, 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 Ixilmord. We have Bolas' Citadel, so we can draw two cards with it. Let your weak minds Whoa, Bleeding Edge. Yikes. What do they have if that's their worst card? Oh, they're trying to recover on card advantage. I could technically hold up a counter spell. That's probably the best play. <laughs> you have no weakness I cannot exploit. I'm just gonna do that. I was gonna do this, but 
just being able to counter if they have a good spell is important. It was pack two. It was pack two, pick two. Ah, they do not gain life. And this is where Totally Lost comes into play. That's funny. Uh, okay, doke. Start by plussing. Get the most info. They are empty handed, so we can afford to go zap that. I will say that we are shield down for a turn, and we have drawn a lot of lands here. Ooh, got the win. I'm kind of worried. Our deck does kind of lack win conditions. I feel like we might want to cut the silver wing. Or just like another big top end card. I think 16 lands is correct here. Like we might just want to play this card. Whoa! Thank you, Super Nintendo, for the gifted Tier 2 sub. I really appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Welcome in... Akahele. Like, this card's not the worst. Totally Lost has been doing some good work against those tokens. Hmm. I've liked Contentious Plan. We might not have room for no escape in the deck. We might just need another creature. Maybe we should try it like that. Or maybe alternately we just play the Behemoth. I like that better. I like the Behemoth because we can ramp into it with our uh, card. And the 5-4 um, is just like a big creature. And uh, that way we don't have to tax our red mana to cast it, even though it's technically a little bit worse. It's easier to cast. And we can't really afford to hold up counter magic in this deck. We just need more creatures. Why the add, though? Why did I add the creature? <laughs> this is tough. I'm going to keep it. We didn't add a card. We cut a card as well. I don't control those. Ignite. Twitch does those. They do them to everyone. Wow, this hand is shaping up. I'm doing great, Don Corleone. Nice username. Wow. Jaya's greeting on an opportunist. That's bold. I'm glad they didn't use it on my silver wing. Jaya's not great in my deck. Can't attack alone. I'm still going to kill it. It's just a man efficient play. I have my curve all lined up for me anyway. That could end badly. At some point down the road. Though Jaya can take out one of the things. The token. Before dying a sad, painful death. Yikes. Yes, thank goodness. That's huge. Because now Jaya gets to take out two things. 
Wow, I just naturally drew Bolas mana. I hope they don't have heart fire. Oh, Jaya's greeting? Sure. You're not exactly a quick learner, are you? Jeez, Jaya. Coming in with the beats. Can this hit? Wow, they have a good deck. Just playing two of the best commons, followed by this guy. Actually, I'm going to scry first. Those lands are basically dead draws. Oh, rewarded. There's the skipper. Large and in charge. I hope they don't um, buff up their amass token. Because if they do, I'm in trouble. There's a lot of cards they could have that would buff it up. Oh, but at least we get to kill the Aven Eternal. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Gotta give him the option to double block. That was in case they had a counter spell. Um, I don't think there are many that they could have had. I don't even know if there are any, but just doing it on the upkeep is a good habit to get. Technically, I have him on a two-turn clock here with my attacks. Maybe I was supposed to attack with this guy. Always make sure I have Bolas mana up. Or Citadel mana. Uh oh. That's not that bad for me. Though. I'm getting a spell is not great. I could have saved this to make it a 3-4. That was probably bad. Because then if I draw a spell next turn, I can double spell. But it has to be a cheap spell. And this way I can threaten to race them still. They hit me for oh, it's also like a ground creature now. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Did we get there? No! The dam breaker! Breaker of dams. Whoa, DZ MTG with the raid. I appreciate that. No! No! They have four of this! No, two of three. Three of them. They have three of that, two Rowl's Outburst, and Chandra! You and I are sit back and watch it burn. I'm so enraged. The rage is palpable, chat. I can't believe it. I'm gonna lose this game. I was in such good shape. Thank goodness they're drawing horrible conditional cards. Oh my gosh. 
There we go. That's a spell. Yeah, nice. I drew like six lands in a row. What do you want from me? No! Are you kidding me? The evil. They put it on the top. Of course they did. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm getting closer. No! What is happening? <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't catch a break. The horror show continues. They're gonna ultimate and I die. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. I, this is 13 of my lands. No. Eight of these are spells, and one of these is on the bottom. No, actually. I only have 16 lands in the deck, so this is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yep. Oh my gosh. That was unfortunate. I feel like that was just really unlucky on my draws. I just, I sit, I drew a bunch of lands in a row right after I got them low. They hit like all their removal spells and I whiffed on Citadel super hard. I needed like three more permanents. I don't know. This is the deck for anyone just coming in. That was, uh, shall we say unfortunate. I feel like I was, like, a pretty strong favorite to win that game. And then I just, like, whiffed really hard. Uh, I'm gonna keep this. It's not the best hand, but Ma Massacre Girl can bail me out. I don't have a... The problem is that I don't have a ton of uh, swamps, and my deck is pretty swamp-reliant. I have a lot of triple black spells. Drawing my one mountain's not helpful in that regard. I don't think he should be mad. I took out Deliverant Evil. The card is clearly horrifically unplayable. Fibble Thip. Um, I don't need Fibble Thip, but I kind of want Fibble Thip. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to keep Fibble Thip in. It's going to help me with my Massacre Girl trigger. Because I can Fibble Thip, it'll kill two one toughness things. And it'll make two more minus one minus one things. I guess it's a free attack. They could also Soren's Thirst me. Braska's finisher, that's fine. There's the swamp. So basically, Massacre Girl is going to kill everything. Because it's going to kill three one-toughness creatures, three more triggers, kills everything else, and then that's three more trigger triggers. So hopefully they play, like, a big creature here. Less likely, because they're probably just going to play a Planeswalker, but... Hmm. No blocks. Oh, they did play a creature. Let's go. So we killed four of their cards for kind of one of mine and a half of mine that replaced itself. Uh, 
Okay. Jaya doesn't do much here. I couldn't have swung in for damage because they had blockers for it. Uh, right. I forgot what Eternal Taskmaster does. That was a bad attack. I'll just go out and say it. Jeez Louise. I am... Bad attack. I'm not drawing very well at all. Maybe I was supposed to just save Massacre Girl for, like, six more turns. Felt nice to get a clean four for one, but... You know. Or four for two. All of their creatures are three toughness. I can't kill any of them. Yeah, we're totally dead. I can't kill their creatures in time. For it to matter. Yeah, take the Jaya. I guess I could have Massacre Curl die, use Aid to fall, and to sweep up the board, but it's not going to happen. Ugh. Maybe Bolas the Gathering is not very good after all. My deck has like 10 creatures in it, so that's going to happen some amount of the time. Still not a great feeling. Not a great feeling at all. Aha! Got him. You cannot see your folly. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna plus. Because if I plus, I can maybe find my aid the fallen. Because if I do find Aid the Fallen, I'm back in it. Because I can get back Massacre Girl. And I guess it doesn't kill... I know there's no one toughness creature, so it doesn't even sweep the ward. reveal I may look so I'm not gonna cast that obviously but I'm gonna keep it on top we're two and two Chuck Chuck probably gonna lose this game um yeah we're getting kind of wrecked I took too long to draw real spells Oh, my. I will return. Oh, sooner than you think. Sooner than you think, my friend. Oh, my gosh. Okay, um. Hmm. Mm hmm, hmm. How can I set up this massacre, girl? And sweep the board. I can't set it up right now. The problem is, is they can just sacrifice whatever creature gets one toughness. No, they can't. No, they can't. So if they double block. Okay, they don't double block. Well, that's a problem. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, that could be a co card. <sighs> but I'm, not, I'm gonna have to get Massacre Girl killed somehow, which I don't know how to do. Oh, I could... I have totally lost left in my deck, right? Fibblethip. Nicole Bolas. Yes, that's what I have to do. I have to hit totally lost so that I can recast Massacre Girl off the top. Okay, it was not a meme. I think it's actually would have been okay. It just didn't work out that way. And they just... It was other reasons, too. Um, so... We can draw this. Let's just do this first, though, because we know we want to cast this. Thundering Drake. I want to go to three over this, probably not. Oh, did they activate a Radic Visionary? No! Not cool, Brohim. Are they all coming at me? Oh no. Oh, am I just dead? No, I'm not. I'm not just dead. Direct. No, that card's actually pretty good against me. Um And also upticking it's kind of nice. Let your weak minds crumble. So I can go block block. Go to 1. I just need to get them low enough to win with this. Oh no, it's okay. I I just was going to say there were other factors other than that one card. It just would have happened that Aid the Fallen would have been much better there. Sometimes you got to try to cast Deliver into Darkness in your Bolas theme deck. So I think we have them deterministically dead here. We just have to have them attack with everything. And if they do that, then we win. Okay. So what we want to do... Is cruelty... 
the Thunder Drake. And block there. Then we have six points of damage getting through. And then we have ten permanents, I believe. They have to cast this thing. Yep. Because this has Menace and this is Flying, so we put them to nine. So how many permits do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Who would have thought that all those turns ago... Oh my gosh, we got the win somehow. Oh my gosh, I didn't think it could be done. But at exactly one life. The combination of Bolas and Bolas' Citadel. Oh my gosh, unreal. This deck is so sick. <laughs> at least it's going to be three and three. Oh my gosh. Any changes we want to make. I think we're just going to keep it the way it's been. I like the theory of Lazatep Behemoth in the deck. Um, deliver unto evil. I kind of want to live the dream at some point. I mean, I've never done it before. Get back all four cards. I mean, it's kind of overkill at some point, but, you know, it just would feel so dang good. Uh, okay. Wow. What a. <laughs> Honestly, the draft portion was the real joy of this one. And then the games have just been gravy because they're just all like wild. <laughs> I feel like I've been drawing a lot of lands and then like battling back anyway. Okay. Yep. We're going to keep this. If we draw two swamps, we just get our turn four bolas. We're going to play Contentious Plan on two to help with that. Or if we draw our Guild Glow, maybe we could do it. Thank you so much, NX650. I really appreciate that. I will say proliferating is really appealing, but so is drawing a swamp in the next two draw steps. Oh. oh. We're going to get our scry as well. Oh. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Are we going to do it to him again? The turn four bolus thing on the play. Hey! Hello, Luca. We're about... <laughs> this is so good. Our rare is better than your rare. <laughs> Thank you so much for the raid. I really appreciate that. It's turn four on the play. <laughs> this is the second time we've done it. Uh, our deck is three and two. We got past Nicole Bolas and the Citadel. The house. So uh, we've got the house and Bolas himself. And uh, we've been eking out wins. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Last round we won at one life. But yeah, welcome in everybody coming in from the host. I hope you had a great stream, Luca. No! <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> Bolas has fallen. <laughs> Oh, I'm just going to play Jaya. Bolas is hard to play in war. I was I was playing Grixis in pack one. Oh my gosh, they have a second one? What? That's absurd. Well, that's a good... <laughs> Wait, I need to double check what this does. Okay, sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> what a draw. That's just nutty. Just wrecked. Oh, Citadel has won me like three games single-handedly. Citadel is hype. It could probably be met in certain decks, I don't know. It's been really good for me. It's also sick to do it with Fibblethip sometimes. And yes, I am playing Vampire Opportunist. I wanted some life gain and another 2-drop because my 2-drops are weak. But we are on... Oh my gosh. Can I even beat a Thundering Saratok is the question. Uh, out. Oh my gosh, well... It's between... I'm just going to take... Uh, hmm. Aid the Fallen gets back my Bolas. Hmm. Killing this... I'm just going to get back Bolas, I think. Living Twister's pretty good. Uh, I think Aid the Fallen's probably the best. Getting back Bolas seems really good. The Ceratoc can deal a damage to my Narset. I might just double block it so I can get another Narset activation. Because this does four to it, and it, one damage gets through. So then a Narset can get activate again next turn. And I have a card to get back with my Aid the Fallen now that's a creature. Sure. We're going to wait as long as possible in case they tap out. Okay, Luca, you have a good one. Wow, they did have a combat trick. That's wild. Okay, that's pretty good. Get Fibblethip. Olas. This can't attack alone, so we're okay. All good. I am death's master. I am death. Master. <laughs> You're also giving me the wins. All is right with the world. Oh, what does that mean? Why would they play the land if I have Bolas? I guess they can just sacrifice it. Yikes. He's got so many good one-liners. I'm just going to play this first. I can just play this next turn. This way, if I decide to get rid of the crunch, I can... With this, I can just do some work. You have no weakness I cannot exploit. Blue Hulk. Okay. Yes! <laughs> Four and two. The deck continues to rumble towards victory. Oh my gosh. That plan typically is not bad, but I mean, turn four Bolas on the play does wonders. This is our deck for anyone just tuning in. We got Bolas at Citadel. We have Bolas. We have this card, but we decided to cut it for Aid the Fallen because Aid the Fallen is just better. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we've got some other cool stuff going on. We ended up playing Lazard at Behemoth over this just because we wanted more creatures to ramp into. Hmm. Whoa! Thank you so much, Eoldir, for the $5 donation. I really appreciate that. Why no beacon? Because I don't have enough creatures in the deck 
and there's only so many slots for no creature for non creatures. I am highway. Also, my deck tends to fall behind, which is where counter spells are oftentimes at their worst. On the draw. Hmm, this is probably a mulligan. I only have seven islands in the deck. This hand just does stone cold nothing. Um, it was not a stip draft. I got, I was playing some Grixis stuff, and then I got past Bolas, and now here we are. I'm just gonna discard last step behemoth here. This is a decent hand. Massacre girl can do a lot of work. Wow, we've been hosted three different times today. That's really awesome. And the community rejoiced. Yeah, we that was pack one, pick one. Oh! Ho, ho. Thank you so much, Blah McBlah, for the subscription. I really appreciate that. How do we have so many rares as mystics? Well, in pack two, we got past uh, Nicole Bolas. I'm just going to do this to try and hit my third land on time. Well, if we can live long enough, maybe we can win this. We need to hit a land next turn. It was all skill. I took all of the black cards, and then we uh, got there. Um, Well, this is a yikes. War Screecher. Oh, yeah, we hit the land. We're living the dream. Scry into my fifth land. Let's do it. Uh, well, we're getting rid of the Jaya. Can't kill a War Screecher. If you can't kill a war creature, you're useless to me. Yeah, we, we cut black really hard. Oh, no. Well, this could be a game we lose. Okadoke. Uh, I think we're dead. Unless they play a one toughness creature so that we can massacre girl them. Oh, we're so dead. Actually, if they don't kill our Tibalt, if they just go face, we can get two counters from Tibalt. We can ping two things. We can get some massacre girl stuff going. I don't know. It would be a, sh a long shot to win this game. This was a tough one. It'd be so funny if they just minus the Johnny attacked face. Come on. No, don't do it. Oh, you painful. You monster. Fine, then. I'll leave. Yeah, I'll just leave. Hmm, I can attack with this thing, and then snipe the Johnny, and I'm taking six a turn. Goodbye, Johnny. Okay, we just need another. We just need them to play a, a tough, a creature that has between one and three toughness. Come on, one and three toughness. Anything goes. I'm feeling like the massacre girl is gonna get the job done. Just play a three toughness creature, please. We can do it. Anything with three toughness. Play another war creature, please. You can do it, opponent. No! <laughs> the absolute opposite! <laughs> That's so bad! We so very screwed! Okay, so we take eight here. Play Bolas. Defiance has consequences, buddy. Don't didn't you hear the news? 
Oh my gosh, of course it's a 5 toughness creature. So now they'd have to play 2 cards. Or I'd have to draw Fibblethip into land or something. Okay, no blocks. No! We were so close. Okay, we're not out of it yet. That was a good draw. That'll keep us alive. So we can Z put that on top. Yeah, it costs six mana. Oh my gosh. We're in it. Oh my gosh, we're in it. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb award. No blocks. We're at two. Here we go. Oh my gosh, did we do the block and a block? So this turn, we just, no chances. Mask a girl. Zap. Cha-ching. 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 We're in it. Oh, the Thunder Drake and then the Citadel. We're alive. We're alive! The one muffin may fall! Oh my gosh. We could do it. Okay, we're still alive. We're still alive. Oh, we're so dead. We need them to not draw a uh, land so they can activate this. Because if they do, we're dead. Uh-oh. This is our life gain right there. A land is really... Oh, gosh. They have found the line. Yep. No! We were so close! No! Oh no, why did they have to draw the Pegasus that turn? With the Visionary and... Oh, man. I know we're just dead here. Whoever Master of the Obvious pointed it out in the chat. Oh my gosh. Obviously, we're dead here. <laughs> I'm not muted. I'm talking. We were so close. <laughs> if we had drawn this a turn sooner... No! Ah, oh, what a wild ride. That was an insane game. You don't always win the top deck wars, but that Massacre Girl clutching it out all game, hoping that it would line up properly, only for it to line up properly at the very end. And then we still lose from a top deck war spot. Maybe what we were supposed to do was take a turn where we just... Uh, because maybe we could have won that game if we had played uh, the Bolas' Citadel and taken one from their 1-3 flyer. And then the following turn, gone Thunder Drake, and uh, like maybe we could have hit an extra land off the Citadel or something. I don't know. It felt like playing Thunder Drake to mitigate damage. But if we could have gotten Thunder Drake up to a 3-4, then we would have been able to uh, 
protect ourselves from that, but it was tough. We did kind of lose a game to playing Deliver Unto Evil because it was just so bad compared to what Aid the Fallen would have done, but I might have ended up playing No Escape instead and then it wouldn't have really mattered as much, I don't think, but still, uh, Deliver Unto Evil kind of lost us a game. <laughs> but if you were watching this on YouTube and you made it all the way to the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed that draft as much as I enjoyed doing the draft myself. It was a lot of fun. It doesn't always line up that Nikolai Bolas ends up with Nicole Bolas and Bolas' Citadel and all of these cool on-theme cards. So, And Massacre Girl, of course, doing some clutch stuff. But, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to do, and it was a really blast sharing it with all of you folks. I do... Uh, if you did make it all the way to the end of the video, remember to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment with your questions, thoughts, and feedback, and to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave hashtag Bolas theme deck to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. You can also check out the Twitch stream live at twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. You can support my content directly via the Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, or if you have Amazon Prime, uh, you can link the Amazon account to your Twitch account, because Amazon owns Twitch, and then you can subscribe to my Twitch channel for free, so at no extra cost to you, you can support me and my content. Um, even if you don't watch stuff on Twitch, you can just set up an account. It's free to do, and then you can support my content. So it's a nice little win-win. Um, you can also... Um... Oh, awesome, One Muffin. Yeah, I had a uh, Obnixilis' Cruelty on top, One Muffin, so I might have been able to stabilize. I was close. Um, but yeah, also, folks, if you want to find my articles, the Discord server, all that stuff will be linked as well below. Um, that's going to do it for this draft video, though. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you folks next time.